Okay, now I've taken the same radical equation and I just merely changed the right hand side. Let's see what happens here. Take the plus 2 to the other side and we get minus 2, minus 2, which of course equals negative 4. So my equation now looks like that. If I square this side, I can get rid of that. And I'm going to square that side. And that gives me 16. Okay. I bring again bring the 3x across, or the plus 1 across, and make it minus 1. So that gives me 15 on the right. So I get 3x equals 15. Divide both sides by 3 and I get x equals 5. Okay, now let's look at our check here. Similar to before, my left hand side, um, I have 3 times 5 is 15 plus 1. I have the square root of 16 and 2. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. The left hand side works out to 6. But the right hand side, it works out to negative 2. 6 doesn't equal negative 2. Okay? The left hand side and the right hand side are not equal. Therefore, this particular question has, has no answer. And we call this an extraneous root. Okay? extraneous. Can you say that? I knew you could. What it says is that if you are taking two things, two numbers, and you square them and compare their answers, the originals might not have been correct. And a perfect example of this is I'm thinking of a number that when you square it you get 9. What is the number? And most people say, oh, the number is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. But in fact, I was thinking of negative 3, because negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. So if I give you the result of something squared as 9, you don't know where it originally came from. Did it come from positive 3 or negative 3? So you just have to watch out on all radical equations to check your answers to make sure that you um, do not have an extraneous root. Now, extraneous root means you do have an answer, but when you put it back into the question, you do not get the left-hand side equaling the right-hand side.